Okay, everybody. Happy Friday. Ricky Robbie here. Ricky Bobby here. Rasta Rob. So uh, today's another reef, uh, nano reef video. And uh, today's a kind of a special day. And this is getting near the end of all the things and the modifications I'm going to do to my tank. And I have some special guests in this bag. So uh, in a minute, I'll tell you more about what I got, but I'll show you what we got here to start. So I was having some issue with my clownfish. He was really picky and he was only eating mice shrimp. He wouldn't eat flakes. He wouldn't eat anything else. So the store I got him from feeds him this Vitalis marine pellets. So I'm hoping that he will eat these and enjoy them because for, uh, Meister shrimp frozen stuff is not good enough. It needs more nutrition. We also got this VCA random flow generator nozzle, which is gonna connect right directly on this lock line. So we're interested to see how that works. Got a brand new pump, the CJ Sink or Silent. 1.0, which is 251 US gallons per hour. This is 120 gallons per hour more flow than the stock flu valve pump. So that is going to give a lot more flow to the corals. It is also going to give a lot more filtration. So I can't wait to put that in. And then for my dragon mandarette in the back, you can see him there, that's Hank. It's actually, it's a, she's a female, but my daughter named her Hank. We've got two bottles of copepods plus i've got some phytoplankton and some more copepods coming in the mail and then so stay tuned and i'll show you how uh, how this stuff works how it's installed and also who's the special guest in the bag okay so the next step there was i unplugged everything and uh <clears throat> i still haven't going to tell you what new fish is in there yet but i'll show you a little bit later so right now everything's shut off i got everything on this blanket so that the water from the evaporation water doesn't get all over my my bar <clears throat> and you disconnect the stock tube, and you take off this one quarter inch lock line sprays. But as you can see, this is the stock flu valve pump. It's like 130 gallons per hour. This is the, the Ciche Italian made, and it is 100, 250 gallons per hour. And it's a direct drop in to the flu valve Evo 13.5. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna plumb it up, connect it, put the suction cups on it and get it in the sun. Okay, so third and final time here. Sorry about the micro bubbles. Um, there's a culprit for that and I'll explain in a second here. So tank is all done. The uh, CJ pump just fits. The lip, there's a lip right here where the water comes down chamber two and up and out into this chamber three, kind of got on the way. You have to kind of maneuver this guy in there um, with the cord and stuff, but it will go in. So that pump is in there. The skimmer's going, my, my custom basket's going. So I have successfully doubled my flow. And with that, now you can see the micro bubbles in this tank. You can see the kind of flow that's going on in here. It's insane. This is how this tank is supposed to be. So a good thing you can do is use your old Fluval pump and put that in your bucket of fresh salt water that you're gonna mix up for your next water change. Great way to mix uh, your salt water and get your salinity right. So you guys are gonna laugh, but most of what you see in here that's circulating right now, these are not bubbles. I was lying. These are actually baby brine shrimp that I hatched myself in a little glass just for fun. And excuse me, I had to top this water level up, so I dumped them in. So right now, my clownfish, as you can see, it looks like he's going crazy, like he doesn't know what the hell's going on in his life. Right now what he's doing is eating baby brine shrimp. And unveiling my new fish, the special guest I wanted to tell you guys about. There he is through the tunnel. That is a Wyoming white Ocellaris clownfish. They're a $100 clownfish. I got them on sale for 70 bucks. I wanted to have a clownfish that was the same species as Dory here, but I wanted to have one that we could distinguish between the two easily so that all of our fish have names and they're all distinguishable. So welcome, uh, we don't know, we don't have a name yet. My daughter doesn't even know we have this fish yet. But uh, yeah, he kind of looks like he's going nuts too. But what he's doing is eating all these little baby brine shrimp. And then there is also uh, eggs. Now you can't see it. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, that's not bubbles. There's brine shrimp swimming and there's also brine shrimp eggs. So I had a hard, I what I should have did was bought a brine shrimp uh, hatchery that the brine shrimp becomes separate from the eggs and would have made the water cleaner. <clears throat> but uh, 
Now that I have double the flow in this tank, I have no problem getting this crap out. And I have a big cleanup crew now. I have, um, what do I have? I have a uh, uh, polka dot hermit crab. There he is right there, nice little crab. I have a scarlet hermit crab that hides during the day up in there. It comes out at night. And I have two, four, seven dwarf hermits that are working around the clock, clock sorry, keeping this tank clean. So, oh, what I wanted to mention was, there's that new um, agitator that automatically causes the current to go kind of erratic. It doesn't make a wave motion. It just takes the water and spirals it and moves it up and down and all over the place. So it does help to kind of change the stream a little bit, which is good. And the store only had one, so I, I didn't have a chance to have two. So for now, we have one of those there and one of those there. So um, I, I'm sure it's doing its job. I know it's doing its job. There's all kinds of videos on it. So uh, you can check that out later. But what I wanted to get at was when I added this pump and it doubles the flow of water volume going through this sump, I had my water level set the where I had it before. I had it actually a little bit lower than this line. And I had the piece of plastic that sets the intake grate level higher. As soon as I turned this pump on, it was so powerful that it completely drained the sump all the way down and ran dry. And I was like, uh oh, now what? So I had to take out that intake grate cover just to give this thing full flow, just in case the water level goes down and I don't see it. And also I had to bring the water level up a little higher just so that this sump and the intake grate can, get, can feed this pump. That's how much more flow is going through this bad boy. It's crazy. This tank, I had my hands in there a little while ago because I did a little bit of cleaning on the screen and I put another coral in. I just put this beautiful uh, Recordia uh, coral in there, this mushroom coral, beautiful. So I just put that in there, moved a couple things around, dumped the brine shrimp in and the tank got a little cloudy. But this thing is pumping and cleaning so fast, it's unbelievable. So I'm gonna do an update video in a week with all my new corals. We'll name them all. There's lots of corals in here now and how my clownfish are doing, if they've become buddies, and my um, uh, my orchid dotty back, which we put in the tank yesterday, he's doing excellent. He likes to hide. He, it's like he knows the camera's out. But there's my Wyoming white clownfish. Right now, he's decided to take the back of the tank. Um, so I also have a mandarin dragonette in here, and he is out and about looking for brine shrimp right now as well. And uh, actually, what I wanted to say was, uh, I'll do, I guess I'll do a separate video on adding the copepods and how to seed your tank. So we'll do that tonight. So anyway, guys, have a good Friday, happy weekend, and I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks, bye.